G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to solve a fairly simple shear force and bending moment problem. So here we're asked to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the beam below. And as you can tell, it's a pretty simple setup. We've got um, our, it's simply supported at A and B, and there's a 30 Newton force acting two meters along the bar. So the first thing you want to do with any problem like this is to always begin with the free body diagram of the entire bar. So let's do that. This is our entire bar, and the forces on it will be this 30 Newton force just here. And you're also going to have reaction forces at A and B. Now A is a roller, so you're going to have just a vertical force AY, but B is a pin support, so you're going to have reaction forces BY and BX. BX just here. Now let's solve for all of these forces using our equilibrium equations. First of all, we know that the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. So right off the bat, you can tell that bx must be equal to zero. That's a decent start. Now we can say that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. And that shows that ay plus by must be equal to, must be equal to 30. Okay, we can't solve this yet. We've got two variables and one equation, so we need something more. And that's where we get the sum of moments about any point is equal to zero. I'm gonna choose the sum of moments about A, not necessarily because it's easier, but just because it's simpler um, is equal to zero. And so what will that be? Well, this 30 Newton force will produce a moment, which will be the magnitude of the force times by the perpendicular distance, which will be two meters. And that's gonna produce a clockwise torque, but this by is going to produce a torque in the other direction, so that's going to be equal to by times by this perpendicular distance, which is going to be 3 meters. Right, and you can tell straight off the bat that by now must be equal to, let's see, divide by the 3 times by the 2, and that's going to be 20 newtons. So by is going to be equal to 20 newtons, which means that Ay, from this equation just here, must be equal to 10 newtons. So already, without even worrying about shear forces or bending moments or any of that stuff, we've already found the reaction support, reaction forces at these supports. So far, so good. Now let's get into the hard stuff. Okay, now that we've done that, what we're going to do now is we're going to make a cut selection somewhere along this part of the beam. So I'm going to make a cut along here at a distance x from the very left. So basically, to reiterate, I'm making a cut along here, right, and then I'm gonna analyze the free body diagram of this selection of the bar, and this cut is at a distance x from the very left. So let's do that. This is our bar, just here, and of course we've made that cut along here, right? And what will be the external forces acting on this thing? Well, of course we've got Ay just here, right? But because we've made a cut here, the internal forces will now pop out so we're going to have V, our shear force, just here, and we're going to have M, our bending moment, popping out. These are the internal forces and moments which have popped out because we've made this cut selection. And we can find out what V and M are by using static equilibrium equations. We know that the sum of forces in the Y direction must be equal to zero, which means that we know that AY must be equal to V, right? Which means that we know V, our shear force, must be equal to 10 newtons, because we know Ay just here, okay? So far, so good. We found our shear force already, right? At least for the domain between the cut sections along zero to two meters, okay? Now let's do, um, now let's find the bending moment. We know that the sum of moments about any point is gonna be equal to zero, but I'm gonna choose the sum of moments about this point is equal to zero, and I'm gonna call this point x, and that's gonna be equal to zero, okay? So let's see, what's the sum of moments about this point? Well, this shear force won't produce a moment. That's the main reason we choose this point. But Ay will produce a moment, and it'll be Ay times by its perpendicular distance, which in this case, this distance is just a distance x, right? And that's going to be equal to, and that's going to be equal to your bending moment m, right? The sum of moments is equal to zero. So this produces a moment. This m is just another moment. And you can show that that's just this, just here, right? Which means that we know that m, your bending moment, is actually equal to 10x, okay? So already you can tell that your bending moment will change depending on where along the bar you're taking your cross-section cut, okay? I just want to reiterate something, that this is only true for the domain 
of x is between 0 to 2 meters, right? So this is only true for 0 is less than x is less than 2 meters, right? Because if, if, if x is greater than 2 meters, then our free body diagram doesn't actually look like this because we need to include the 30 newton force just here. Okay, so this is the domain we're interested in, between 0 is less than x is less than 2 meters. Now let me quickly resize this. Okay, now we're ready for the harder part of this problem. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another cut selection along here, right? And I'm going to choose a cross-section cut along here so that I can analyze the shear force and bending moment for this section of the bar. So let's draw the free body diagram for this new cut around here. It's going to look like this. It's going to look like this. It's going to be a little bit longer. And of course, we're making the cut selection just along here. And we've got our 30 Newton force acting down here somewhere. This is 30 Newtons. We've got our force AY popping up like this. Okay, and are there any other forces? Of course, we've got our shear force V and our bending moment M. Okay, now we're ready to start analyzing this like we did before. But before I do, I just want to clarify that what this will do, this will give us an understanding. This, this, this free body diagram only applies for the domain 2 meters is less than x is less than 3 meters, right? This free body diagram only holds between this section of the bar, okay? So now we're ready. Let's, let's start doing this. We know that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to 0, and that means you can tell straight off the bat that ay, ay, let's see, must be equal to, must be equal to 30, 30 plus v plus v, which means that v must be equal to, let's see, 10 minus 30, it's minus 20 newtons, okay? So already, notice, the shear force just plummets right after this 30 newton force. That's really interesting, okay? Now let's do the sum of moments. The sum of moments about any point is going to be equal to zero. I'm going to choose the sum of moments about this point just here. x is going to be equal to zero. Well, don't forget that this distance now is a distance x, which means that ay will produce a moment equal to ay times by this distance, which is x, right? And that's going to be, let's see, this will produce a moment this way, this will produce a moment this way, so it's going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to 30, this force, times by its perpendicular distance, which is this distance, which is going to be x minus 2 meters. So it's going to be x minus 2 meters. This distance just here is x minus 2 meters. That's this distance, right? And then, of course, you've got this plus m just here, right? And you can tell straight off the bat that m must be equal to, once you rearrange this equation, m is going to be equal to minus 20x um, plus, plus 60. That is our bending moment, okay? So notice... Between the domain between 0 and 2 meters, our shear force and bending moments are given by these equations, but between the domain between 2 and 3 meters, that's this section of the bar, our shear force and bending moment are given by these equations. So what do we do to draw the shear, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram? Let me show you. Okay, let me just scroll down a little bit to make some space, and let me just draw our shear force diagram just here. This will be our shear force diagram, it's going to be x on the horizontal axis, and v will be on the vertical axis just here, and this will be where my bending moment diagram goes. It'll be x just here, and it'll be m just here, okay? Now, if you wanted to plot the value of x, v versus x, you'll have to look at these equations separately. Well, v is quite simple. Between the domain of 0 to 2 meters, v is just stuck at 10 newtons. So it goes like this for 10 newtons for some while, right? And then you hit 2 meters, right? And then all of a sudden the equation for V changes and it just plummets down to minus 20, minus 20 newtons and stays like that till it reaches 3. So this is going to be minus 20 and this is going to be 10 just here, okay? This is our shear force diagram done. And often you'll find in textbooks that they just shade the inside in for some reason. So I'll do that too, okay? Now let's have a look at m just here. Okay, well, between the value, between the domain of 0 to 2 meters, m is defined by this. So, this is what our equation is going to look like. It's going to look like a slope, a line, actually, 
of m is equal to 10x. That's what this equation of this line is. But it's only defined between 0 and 2 meters, so it's only defined to this point. And then it's defined by this equation, right? And, and if you don't believe me, I, I recommend you, you plug this in, but I guarantee you that if you were to plug that in, you'll get a second line which actually goes straight down like that back to this axis just here, okay? So just to reiterate, this is the equation m equals 10x. This is the equation of the line for m is equal to minus 20, minus 20x plus 60. This is the equation for v is equal to 10, and this is the equation of the line v is equal to minus 20, okay? So that's what we've done. We've figured out the equations, and all we're doing is plot them. Now let me shade in this again. Stick to common convention, and we're done. This is our shear force diagram. This is our bending moment diagram. I hope that made sense, guys. That's how you do these types of problems.